Om Magyanat Marandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chatsura Militanya Shri Gurude Shri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Shri Karun Vaishnavamscha, Shri Rupam Sakrajatam, Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam, Sadvaitam Savadutam Parjana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhanikamscha, Hey Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpake Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Abta Kanchana Kodange Radhe Vrinda Veneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Vanchakaupatarubhyascha kripa sindhu vaye vacha patitanam pavanibhyo vaishnavibhyo namo nama jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nitananda shri atvaita gadadha shri vasati goradhinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Srimad Bhagavatam describes not only persons who met with success in spiritual life, but we hear about also personalities who had some difficulties in their spiritual life and they didn't meet with success immediately. So I want you to speak today about one of the son, the eldest son of Lord Rishavdev. Lord Rishavdev is described in fifth canto Srimad Bhagavatam and we're told how he had 100 sons among his 100 sons, you have the nine Yogendras, who were all Mahabhagavat devotees and who traveled and preached. But the most famous of the sons of Rishabdev is Bharat. And India, of course, is known as Bharat Varsh after that son of Rishabdev, Bharat, who became king became ruler of the world, Bharat Maharaj. However, he was a greatly, while he was greatly uh, empowered to become a, a ruler, he was not inclined to pursue the path of material prosperity. Rather, he wanted to follow the path of renunciation. And at an early age, he retired from material life, giving up the throne and going off to the Himalayas. And we're told how he went to Ganduki, where the Ganduki River flows, which is a place where you can get your Shaligram Shila. Generally, the Shaligram Shilas are all there in the Kanduki. So Bharat Maharaj was residing in that area in the Himalayas. He was completely detached. He gave up the kingdom. He gave up everything, family, and 
all opulence and went off alone to the mountains, to this holy place, a very, very holy place, very special place, Ganduki there. It's quite high up in Himalayas. You want to go there? You can get your Shaligram Shiva there. When it, it said, uh, Gopal, who, who did it go? Huh? Gopal Bhatta, yeah, he went there and he was, the, the, the Shaligram Shilas jumped out of the water, begging him, begging him to take them with him. And of course, one of those Shaligrams became Radha Raman, the deity. So, you know, go there, get a Shaligram Shila, and maybe you'll also get a self manifesting deity from the Shaligrams. However, Bharat Maharaj didn't just go there to get some Shaligrams and come back. He went there to stay. He was residing up there. To go there and come back, that's the enjoying mentality. Prabhupada talks about the spaceman going to the moon. That they go there and come back. He said, that is the enjoying mentality. You want to go there, you don't want to come back. Right? Just like you want to go to the spiritual world, you don't want to come back again. You want to stay there in the spiritual world. We have our book, The Science of Reincarnation, Coming Back. The last chapter is called, Don't Come Back. Right? So that's the idea. Bharat Maharaj certainly went to Ganduki with this in mind, to, to stay there. Gave up everything and he's staying there in the Himalayas. But as destiny arranged, he developed some affection. It happened that while he was residing there, there was the loud roaring of a lion some ferocious beast was roaring and at that time a pregnant deer was just just about she was she she was so frightened when she heard the roar of this animal you could imagine for a deer of course that's a food for the the tiger or the lion they hunt these animals so the deer heard the roaring sound and she jumped across the Ganduki, but as she jumped across, the calf which she was carrying in her, whatever it is, she, it fell out from her body. And now that she gave birth to a, a young deer. And she herself died at that time. So the, the older deer gave up her, she died. But the young deer was there, and Bharat Maharaj had witnessed all of this. And being a devotee, he's naturally compassionate. Devotees are kind to all living entities. They see all living entities equally. You know, there's that story, have you heard that story about the the two men were walking home one evening and they saw the scorpion and it was drowning in the water. Somehow there was a pool of water and there was a scorpion drowning in the water. And so the devotee saw the scorpion there and he thought, oh my goodness, I should save it. So he put his hand in and he picked up the scorpion. But when he picked up the scorpion, it bit him and it fell back into the water. However, although he'd been bitten by the scorpion, he again tried to pick up the scorpion, and again it bit him. So again he tried to pick up the scorpion, and this time his friend said to him, why are you taking so much effort for that creature? It just bites you, why are you worrying about it? 
But his friend said, he doesn't give up his nature. Why should I give up my nature? So that's uh, the mood of the Vaishnava. That they have that kind of compassion on all living entities. So Bharat Maharaj was up there in Ganduki, in the region of Dan Ganduki, and he sees this young calf all alone. No one to care for it. The mother had died. So out of affection, he began, he begins to take care of it. He begins to care for her. Feed it. But the problem is he becomes and absorbed, so absorbed in taking care of this young deer that it interferes with his spiritual practice. Because when you go up to a mountain place like Ganduki, you don't just go up there to enjoy the scenery. You have to absorb yourself in meditation on the Lord. You have to maybe chant mantras, of course, Satya Yuga. So they would do more meditation, silent meditation. So Bharat Maharaj was living up there, but his sadhana became completely affected, disturbed because of this young deer, because he had so much affection for the animal. He thought, this animal is depending on me. It doesn't have anyone else to take care of her. I should take care of her. It's my duty. And he did. And every day he would be giving, finding some kind of grasses or herbs or even what fruits, whatever he could find there. And he would feed to the young deer. And it happened that in course of time that as he would be doing a sadhana, his mind would not be on the Lord, but his mind was on the deer. Where is the deer? Where is she go? Where is she go? He'd be worried about the deer going away. He became attached to the deer. So in course of time, it happened that Bharat Maharaj met with an accident. While he was going over the mountain, somehow he had an accident and he fell from a, a cliff and he fell and he, he died. He, but at the point of his death, he was simply thinking of the deer. And in his next life, he had to take birth as a deer. However, because he was already very, quite advanced, very advanced, he was already very advanced. So although he took birth as a deer, he had remembrance of his previous life. And he remembered how he had the human body, and how he'd given up the world, he'd given up his kingdom, he'd given up everything to come to the Himalayas, to come up to the mountains, to live in this mountain place. And now he finds himself in the body of a deer. So in the body of the deer, he was very careful to try to get the association of saintly people. And the deer would roam through the Himalayas looking wherever the saintly people were. And he would go near there and he would also try to get their remnants because they would, they would be taking their food and after they would eat, the deer would come and he would try to get some of the remnants from these saintly people. In this way, Bharat Maharaj, knowing that he'd become a deer, he had to live in the body of a deer. And it took some time 
for him to again give up that animal body. And by the grace of the Supreme Lord, after he gave up the body of the deer, he took his next birth as Jadbarat, right? He was born in a Brahmana family, the son of a Brahmana. But he was very careful not to get entangled in family affairs because he knows the affection, the bonds of the family. So he was very careful. Whatever his father would instruct him, he would do the opposite. The father would say, after you go to toilet, you wash your hand, take a bath, wash your hands, wash your feet, wash your mouth. So he would wash his hands, wash his feet, wash, wash his mouth, then go to toilet. <laughs> He would do everything that just father would say, eat with the right hand. He would eat with the left hand. He would do everything just opposite. Father would think, what can I do? My son is stupid. This is how he became Jadbarat. But that was to his advantage because it meant the family didn't have affection for him. When you're very intelligent, you're doing well at college, then the mother and father are proud of the achievements of their children. Oh, yes, my son's doing so well. He's got admission into this good college. He's doing very nicely in his studies. And in this way, the family become very attached to the children. Jabbarat was very careful. He didn't want that to happen because he'd already experienced the difficulties and the dangers. Now, we, may, we want to learn from this whole incident of Jan Bharat Maharaj, that how Bharat Maharaj, how he became a deer. Out of affection for one deer, he became a deer. He became, now we may think, well, that's not going to happen to me. You know, I'm not in the Himalayas. And there are no deer around here. <laughs> <laughs> but there are a lot of other things we get attached to. For example, mobile phones. <laughs> we all have mobile phones and computers. Maybe you get a scooter, one day you get a car, and in this way we become very attached to these things. Hmm. We're not attached to uh, things like maybe you don't have a dog, you don't have a cat. You know, we were hearing this morning from Prabhu, he was telling people have more pets than they have children. <laughs> An interesting point. <laughs> but uh, you don't fall into that trap, but we do get trapped with other things, mobile phones and computers, and cars, and all of these different devices. They're very, we, we easily develop a lot of attachment to them. Prabhupada used to talk about people, how they were attached to their cars. He would always talk about how uh, someone's driving their car and they're thinking, I am an ambassador. Ambassador was originally the car in India, in Prabhupada's time. And there was, there was no other car, actually. There was only ambassadors. So Prabhupada used to talk about how People would drive their car, and the man in the car is saying, out of my way, this is ambassador. Rickshaw, out of my way. And then if somebody hits me, they would say, you hit me, you hit me. He said, no, I hit the car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we identify with these things. We identify. We become so enamored, so attached to them. They become the center of our existence. 
And so you can, and we, and we see people, you know, they, they're chanting Japa sometimes, the big bags in one hand and the mobile phones in the other hand. And where is the consciousness? Is it on the Japa or is it on the mobile phone? We, we, we wonder. We're left to think about that. But we want to be very careful, very cautious about these things. It's very much recommended. You want to chant your japa, turn off your mobile phone. Don't worry about it. It will, it will survive. Don't worry. <laughs> so material life is like that. We do, we do become enamored, we do become attached to the objects of this world and they don't help us. You often, they, while we use them in the service of Lord Krishna, they don't necessarily help us to remember Krishna. It's up, of course, it, it's, 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 a, a, it's a fine line how much it's actually benefiting us and how much harm is doing to us. Every time, you know, they send reports about how many hours you have used your phone in a day. Do you get that feedback on your phone? You, you spent eight hours today on the phone or you spent four hours on, you, you realize, wow, so much time, you know, we've used so much of our life in the service of this mobile device. It's very, very worrying. It's very. How much have we remembered Krishna? How much you know? I've used the phone this much. How much have I used to chant japa? How much time did I spend chanting my japa? How much time did I spend reading Srimad Bhagavatam? I spent all this time with my mobile phone. What about all the other things? Where did the time go? We want to be very cautious. Prabhupada always quoted Chanakya about time. Time in that you can buy, you can buy gold. You cannot buy time. In China, they have the same thing. You can buy an inch of gold. You cannot buy one inch of time. And they have another saying about time. They say time moves like an arrow. It moves very fast. It goes very fast. That's one thing about Kali Yuga. We don't have a long life. We have short lives in the Kali Yuga. Such a Yuga, Bharat Mara, he had a long life. We don't have that long life. We have a short life. Prayena payusasabhya kalovas minyuge jana, right? Srila Vyasadeva describes people in the Kali Yuga are endowed with a, a short life. Prabhupada used to quote from the Bible. In the Bible, it talks about three score year and ten. Three score. One score means twenty. So three score means sixty. So 60 plus 10, 70. Prabhupada would say, three score year and 10, it is already passed. Prabhupada was telling us, he said, I can die any time. Because the Bible said, average life is 70. To how many people live to be 100? It's not very, very rare. So average life span is about 70. And Prabhupada would say, after 70, any time you can die. And Prabhupada was preparing us for his departure in this way. Anyway, the point is, we have a short life. Prahlad Maharaj says, you, we spend so many years playing with balls. How, how much cricket did you play in the course of your childhood? You know? And how much time did you spend with the internet, surfing the net? We spend a, a lot of time on these things. 
we have to be very conscious how we use our time. Because that time, we never get it back again. It's gone forever. So making use of our valuable time, very important. Why did Bharat Maharaj become attached to a deer? What did he do wrong? One thing which he did wrong was he did not have association. Although he was in the holy place, he was alone. That is a danger. When you're alone, you don't realize sometimes how you're going astray. Just like you can be sitting in a boat, and if you have not put the anchor there, then one minute the tide's going out, and the boat also starts to drift out, and you don't notice it. You're just sitting in the boat, and you don't realize one before you know it, the boat's out in the middle of the sea. In the same way, we drift out into the ocean of material existence into the ocean of maya. We come into that realm of forgetfulness of Krishna. That's what happened to Bharat Maharaj. He was simply thinking about, dear little dear, this dear needs me. I'm the pr provider. I'm maintaining this dear. I'm protecting it. He was thinking like that. He was thinking himself, to be the, you know, and actually he'd forgotten God. He was thinking himself to be the center of the world. So that's what happens when you're alone. It's not easy to keep up your consciousness. And these different things which come along, these little incidents like deers, somebody gives you a pet dog, Somebody, there was one devotee couple, the, the lady's sister had several children and this couple, they didn't have a child. <laughs> so the, the lady's sister came and said, you take this child, I've already got three children, you can have this child. And she gave her child, fourth child, she gave it to her sister. So in this way, the couple, they got a child. They never had a child, but they got one. And this way they became occupied bringing up a child. So these things happen sometimes, you know. You don't want a mobile phone, somebody comes to give you one. <laughs> you give, they give you one. So you think, well, Krishna's arrangement, Krishna's arrangement. <laughs> what to do? Have to use it in Krishna's service, right? So the intention, good intention is there in the beginning, but it may, the, the problems come that it's very easy to forget, very easy to drift away, unless association is there. If you're on your own, I mean, you, we all know when we're alone, and you pick up your mobile phone, you can start looking, so many things are there. Right now it's G5, everything is there. Any Bollywood movie you want, you can have it. And we can easily fall into the ocean of the material existence. So we have to be on guard. This is the problem. You have to be very much aware, very much alert. One of our devotees, a devotee in London, he joined in London, he used to be a boxer. He was in the ring, you know. He was a colored body guy. He's a very nice devotee, actually. And he told me, he said, he said you know, sometimes in the ring, you know, he said, you, you have to watch who you fight. You know, somebody hits too hard, you don't want to be, be, in, be in the ring too long with him because they're really going to hurt you. So if they hit, you know, they hit you really hard, and you just just fall down. <laughs> even even you don't feel like even they didn't hit you hard enough to fall. Just fall down and finish it. Then then the fight's over. <laughs> it won't hurt you anymore. But he told me also he said when you go in the ring, he said very important. You got to keep the hands up. You got to keep the guard up over the face because if you drop the hand, 
<laughs> you write in the film. You get all eyes cut and everything. So you got to keep the guard up. You got to keep, you'll see that when they're in the ring, they're always like this, the hands are up. So similarly, devotees were in the ring with Maya, fighting Maya every day. When you go material world, you may be in the office, you may be in the uni, in the school, wherever you are, whatever, there's, Maya is everywhere and she's waiting for her chance. You have to therefore always be on guard. We have to keep the, the guard up to protect ourselves from that. How to, how to keep the guard? Well, we're supposed to remember Krishna. Bharat Maharaj had good intentions, but he didn't have anyone there to point out his deviation. When you start drifting away, you see Bharat Maharaj had, had gone on for some time. This business, taking care of the deer, taking care of the animal, it was going on and on, longer and longer. And nobody was pointing out to him, Hey, come on, watch out, look what you're doing. You're going to end, you're thinking of this animal all the time. You get devotees like that, you know. Somebody's got a little cat, you know. Some lady or something got a little cat to her. My cat. Oh, it's not a problem. <laughs> but it does take away our attention. We get very distracted. The point is, we want to be attentive. We don't want to get distracted from Krishna. We want to keep our mind fixed on Krishna. And in order to do that, we have to have association. Now, if we're not going to associate with devotees, then you have to associate with the holy name. That is recommended very much in the Kali Yuga. Always chant the holy name. And if you're not going to, if you cannot chant the holy name, then read Prabhupada's books. Read Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Prabhupada says, uh, if you study the Srimad Bhagavatam, one day you will see Krishna in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. We have to, we have to, we have to read this Bhagavad How many of you have read every one of Prabhupada's books? How many of you have made a study of all of Prabhupada's? I often ask devotees, it's quite surprising sometimes when we see people, how few people have actually read all of Prabhupada's books. And of course, just reading them one time is not enough. We want to read them again and again. And we, we want to study these, these uh, texts again and again. And myself, I've found a, a lot of benefit from presenting courses like Bhakti Shastri and Bhakti Vaibhav. It helps a lot for me to go deeper into the study of Prabhupada's books in the association of devotees. Prabhupada writes in the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam that more important than simply reading on your own is to discuss and to explain. We often sit and read on our own and you ask somebody, what did you read Prabhu? Uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, they're not too sure. They've been reading, re sitting there with the book open. What did they learn? What did they actually read? They're, they don't remember. They were just, it was just some book exercise. What, so what's more important than reading is sitting with devotees and discussing and explaining the texts. It's very important for us to get that kind of association. And that is why we have things like Bhakti Priksha, these different kinds of programs, to bring people together as groups that they will get the habit of discussing and hearing spiritual knowledge from each other, sharing 
for example, sharing what they don't understand, what they, what they find difficult. It's important for us to get this kind of association. And this is what keeps us strong in Krishna consciousness. Without that kind of association, then it's difficult. Just simply trying to be a loner is not Krishna conscious process. We depend on association. Prabhupada was saying 98% of our progress in Krishna consciousness depends on association. Now, if you, if you can get, if, if you're not able to get devotee association, then we have to associate with the holy name and we have to associate with the books. But the best is to get the devotee association. One devotee asked Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, what's better to read the books on my own or to hear the book from the devotee, to hear from another devotee? Prabhupada said, better you hear from a devotee. Devotee said, why? He said, because that devotee will take you by the ear. He'll make you hear. Just like you get those teachers, you know, sometimes they'll pull your ear, you know. So like that, the teacher, the teacher will help us to get in that mood, to absorb our mind in thought of Krishna. We have to get that kind of association. And Prabhupada certainly gave that kind of association when he was with devotees all the time. He was pushing the devotees. Why are you sleeping so much? There's one devotee, Guru Kripa. He told me, he said one time he was in Hawaii. Prabhupada called him. They woke him up in the middle of the night. Prabhupada said, and said Prabhupada wants to see you. So it was the middle of the night, so Guru Kripa got up and he went into Prabhupada, Prabhupada put on a dhoti and went into Prabhupada's room. And Prabhupada said to him, what are you doing? He said, I'm sleeping, Prabhupada. He said, why? <laughs> Guru Kripa said, Prabhupada, it's the middle of the night. It's one o'clock in the morning. Prabhupada said, I'm not sleeping. I'm writing Srimad Bhagavatam. Why are you sleeping? You're a sannyasi. You have to conquer over eating and sleeping. <laughs> Prabhupada was like that. He was training, pushing the devotees. Another devotee, Bhakta Das, he was the temple president of Berkeley in Prabhupada's time. And so he was telling Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, I'm so busy, I don't have time to chant my rounds. And Prabhupada said, how many hours are you sleeping? He said, Prabhupada, I'm just sleeping five hours. He said, why are you sleeping five hours? He said, chant your rounds. Chant your rounds, don't sleep. You cannot just say, oh, I have to sleep. Chanting is more important. How can you sleep if you've not chanted your rounds? Prabhupada was training us to develop that, this kind of mood. To, the urgency, the importance of practicing Krishna consciousness very seriously, really absorbing ourselves with full concentration in devotional service. Of course, we may think, wow, it sounds very, very, very austere, isn't it? Well, what, look at the, People think austerity is to work in the job, work in the job day and night to make money. That is, that is like the donkey. The donkey's carrying a heavy load. So people who just work hard all day to make money, they're just mudhas. That's not austerity. Austerity is sacrificing material pleasure for the service of Krishna. So we want that kind of austerity, giving up material enjoyment for the service of Krishna. Bharat Maharaj went to the Himalayas 
good intentions, but he got deviated. It's very dangerous to be alone. You go away on your own and one by one these different attachments come. The handphone comes, then you get the computer, then you get the car. Before you know it, you've got a nice wife and the children and they're all there. <laughs> and you have a big responsibility. That's okay. That's all right. We're not against that. You know, you can still be, you can be Grihastha Brahmachari. Right? We have Grihastha Brahmachari. But don't forget Krishna, whatever happens. That's important. You have to keep up the sadhana. There are many great souls who are also in family life. We see the Mahajans, the 12 Mahajans, several of them are in family life. Swayambhu Narada Shambhu. Swayambhu Brahma. Is he a Brahmachari? No. And Lord Shiva, is he, he's not a Brahmachari. Swayambhu Narada Shambhu. Komar Kapilo Manu. Komara Brahmacharis. Kap uh, Komar Kapila, Kapila Brahmachari. Manu Grihastha. Pralado Janako Bhishmo. Pralad Maharaj. Grihastha. Yes. Pralado Janaka Bhishma. Bali. Bali Maharaj. Vyasaki. Vyasaki. Sukadev Goswami. And Yamaraj, like this, you can see Mahajan doesn't mean you have to be strict celibate. You can be in family life and you can be also a Mahajan. You can be great souls. Prabhupada said also, he said, we have many devotees who are working in offices and in factories and they're contributing their hard-earned wealth for the service of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. He said, these persons are actually in the renounced order of life. That was Prabhupada's words. It's there, actually. You can read it, Bhagavad Gita Purport. You may be working in the job. That's all right. But work for Krishna. Do it for Krishna. Remembrance of Krishna. Don't forget why we're here. Our mission in life is to become Krishna conscious. We have to get success in this life. We don't want to come back. We want to be very careful, therefore, to keep up our consciousness of Lord Krishna. And it comes by very carefully practicing sadhana, hearing and chanting, and very important to get association. Sometimes devotees, they, they get a house, they rent an apartment, and they rent it so far away from the temple that they can, can hardly come to the temple. They say, no, we're very far away. I say, well, why did you rent a house all the way over there? <laughs> yeah, they do it just so they don't have to come in the morning to the temple. <laughs> so what can you expect, you know? Oh, it's difficult for us. We're so far away. You rented the house, Prabhu. You took the place. These are some problems which come up. You have to be very careful about these things. You have to make arrangements to keep ourselves in Krishna consciousness. We have to be very careful. Be on guard, right? Don't let Maya creep in. She is very cunning, very subtle always finding ways to deviate us, to take us away from Lord Krishna. So we have to be very conscious. Tamal Krishna Goswami, one thing he used to say was, first we have to become conscious and then we have to become Krishna conscious. So that was something similar. We were hearing also from Chaitanya Charan Prabhu. He was talking like that. Uh, First understand that we're Brahman and then means we're not the body, right? If we're Brahman, 
then it follows, we're not the body, that's the corollary. So we have to put it together. Not, oh, I'm Brahman, I can do anything. <laughs> no, I have to understand, I'm not the body, I'm not the senses, I'm not the servant of the senses. I'm meant to control my senses. It takes attention. We have to be very careful not to let anything distract us. So this is the instruction that we get this message from Bharat Maharaj. And we can you see Bharat Maharaj in his third life when he became Jagbarat, that he's very careful. He doesn't want to present himself as being an enlightened soul. He presents himself just like a jada, a, a stupid person. But because he had a stout, strong body, Maharaj Rahugan recruited him to carry his palanquin. Maharaj Rahugan was going to visit holy places and he needed another palanquin carrier for some reason. And he thought Jad Bharat and he thought, well, he's a strong person. He looks like he could carry. He could be one of the carriers. So Jad Bharat got recruited to carry the palanquin. And Jad Bharat didn't protest that, you know, they're telling me I have to do this. So he did it. But when he was carrying the palanquin, the insects were on the ground. So he was, you know, moving this way and that way. He was very careful not to stamp on any of the insects. But Jad, uh, Maharaj Rahugan got upset. What's happening? Why are you not walking properly? This is giving me a rough ride. Maharaj Rahugan got very angry and threatened to beat him. And then Jad Bharat began to speak wisdom. He began to enlighten him. Yes, you think you're the master. You think you can beat me. You're thinking you're the king. You're thinking, I am your servant. You do not know who you are. This is the illusion. And Maharaj Rahugan, Jarbarat went on to speak so much enlightening words. Maharu, Maharaj Rahugan was amazed and he fell at his feet and then asked him, where did you get this, all of this from? How did you get all of this devotion? Because Jarbarat looked like a, an imbecile. He looked like a foolish person. So Maharaj Rahugan was amazed. And then Jad Bharat tells Maharaj Rahugan the same thing which Prahlad told his father. That there's only one way you get this devotion. The only way you get this devotion is you have to take the dust from the feet of the devotee. You have to get the mercy of the devotee. You have to take that dust and smear it all over your body. That is the only way you get devotion. So Jad Bharat was understanding the importance of association because he had to delay going back to Godhead. He had to, he got lost. He had to take birth as a deer because he didn't have that association. It cost him a lifetime. He had to delay be becoming, coming to the transcendental platform. So very important for us is to value the association of devotees, not to get into Maya. It's, if so long as we have that association with the you know, Prabhupada also talked about association with devotees. He compared it to the Iskon chutney. I don't know if you, you guys here in Calcutta know about chutneys, Iskon chutneys. Are they giving you chutney sometimes? Chutney, you know how to make chutney? And Sunday feast in Iskon temples, you know, we have a Sunday feast. We will make chutney. It's, you get something like, uh, strawberries or, apple or, or you know some kind of fruit or it could tomato also tomato chutney but you, you cook the you cook the water off and you put you know cook some put some spices in it and you put some sugar in it also so the iskon chutney should be so hot you can't stand it oh you know <laughs> 
you know, it's South Indian food sometimes, you know, the chili or something, you know, it's so hot. Wow, who cooked this, you know, who made this chunk? It should be so hot, you can't stand it, but so sweet, you can't resist it. <laughs> that is the typical Iskon chutney. So, association with devotees is like that. <laughs> Sometimes so hot, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some people so hard, so heavy, but so sweet, irresistible. So we want to appreciate the association of devotees and never give it up. Always value that. And we say Lava Matra Sadhu Sangi Sarva Shastra Hoy. Even a short time in the association of devotees can give us perfection. This is the lesson we get from Bharat Maharaj. We want to remember that. So are there any questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, Jada, uh, Jadavad acted as if he is mad. So whenever people see him, uh, they might uh, think something wrong about him and this would be Vashna Aparat. So because Jadavad was intentionally acting mad, acting as if he is mad and because of him, others are getting Vashna Aparat because he is actually a pure devotee. So others are getting some loss because of him, like how to understand this thing. Well, it's not necessarily true what you say, that everyone would disrespect him because he's mad. he didn't act mad in that way. You know, people often think we're mad as devotees. <laughs> we're chanting and dancing in the streets. You think the Hare Krishna people are mad. They shave their heads, or they wear these clothes. They think they're mad. We're going to stop it just because what they think. You're going to stop doing all that just because people think you're mad? No. So, Jad Bharat, you know, he, 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 he's known as Jad Bharat. He, he behaved like that so he could get away from the fa family because the family affection is so strong. But when the son is, you know, if the son is, you know, <laughs> it's just a burden on the family, the father thinks, so I can't earn any money. Nobody, no woman will marry him, no same woman will marry him and like that, you know. What good is he? You know, so they don't value that kind of son very much. So let him go. So Jadbarat could leave the home without too much trouble. And he, he was wandering, but obviously he wasn't so mad because Maharaj Rahugana wanted him to carry the palanquin. And Maharaj Rahugana also was trying to instruct him. So it, it's not that they thought he's just mad, just crazy, oh, you know, that they would insult him or anything. Yeah? Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. So basically, uh, the, in the context of association, uh, like, when we live in association, uh, when we generally become familiar with the devotees, especially talking about the senior devotees, uh, with time they become friendly with us. And especially even men, much senior devotees like our counselors and even <laughs> more senior devotees become friendly with us. And we start to take uh, that association very cheaply. <laughs> like uh, how to maintain that uh, Maharaj, that uh, we, sh we can value that association uh, even uh, for a long time, it's for a long time, even in the situation that we are, as a time, like friendly dealings are there, but still we value the association and value the su su superiority, how, th how to do that. Well, you do that with the blessings of your mentor and your teacher, your superior. They will remind you that I may be your friend, but it doesn't mean you're equal to me. 
I may be friendly to you, but at the same time, you should remember your position, that you're subordinate to them and you're dependent on their mercy. And so the senior devotees, they will have that art. <laughs> they will let you know if you're overstepping your position. One thing is don't get too close and don't get too far away. You get too close to people, then you start to see them as an ordinary person. And you get too far away, then you lose the connection altogether and you're finished, then you're in trouble. So it's important that don't get too close. In other words, don't become over familiar. Always try to keep respectful behavior. To I was reading, you can, I was reading Nectar of Devotion and Prabhupada was explaining how Prajumna, Lord Krishna's oldest son, now he was the oldest of 10 sons from Rukmini and he was a, uh, the direct son of Lord Krishna, but Prajumna would always bow his head before his father. He was always very humble and very respectful to his father. And whatever his father told him, he would immediately do it. So like that, the, the, this is the, these examples are there. Being very uh, humble and willing to serve the superior. That is the way to make advancement. You get the blessings of the superior. When you serve the Vaishnavas, then they will bless you. So we want to always keep that mood of thinking of ourselves lower than the straw in the street. Lord Chaitanya. Now, Lord Krishna Das Kaviraj said, take that number three verse of Shikshastikam and put it on a thread and wear it around your neck for constant remembrance. Remember, I am lower than a straw in the street. I am, I should be more tolerant than the tree. I should be devoid of all sense of false prestige and I should offer all respect to others. Someone asked me, what does it mean to be humble? I explained that our ego should be in proportion to the spiritual dimension of the soul. What is the size of the spirit soul? Spirit soul? One hundredth of one hundredth of the tip of a hair. Very tiny, very minute. Our ego should be in proportion to that. Not like I'm five foot eight, you know, I'm five foot ten or six, whatever. We're thinking I'm the body. No, ego should be in proportion to our spiritual dimension. One hundredth, one hundredth of the tip of the hair. That, that is humility. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, as we hear from Srimad Bhagavatam that Bharat Maharaj, he gave up his kingdom and everything and Bhagavatam uses the term, he gave up like Malwa, as one doesn't look back after passing his tool, like that he gave up everything and he went to Himalaya and Gondagi river. So how is that he got attached to a deer because it, when he was in the kingdom, he had that season of material things. So how is that he got that uh, determination to give up that and how is that he got attached here to just a deer? Well, that is the whole lesson from this that we have to understand he became careless. Don't think that because you know, now I'm initiated, now I'm a devotee, you now I can play with Maya. The Srila Prabhupada would used to tell us, he said, the problem with my disciples is they're not afraid enough of Maya. We can easily fall into that trap. So you have to be very, very careful that he, yes, he was so renounced, he, he was so advanced. But even though you can get to that advanced state, you can fall back again. 
you get to, he was up on the level of Bhava, but he fell back, became a deer. It cost him one birth. He had to delay. He was very advanced, but you become careless and Maya will get you immediately. You just, you drop the guard, you'll get it right in the face, right? Maya will hit you. You have to be very alert. And the more you become advanced, the more you have to be alert, the more careful you have to become. So it's a, it's a very important lesson for all of us in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. That whole life, that, that whole Leela of Bharat Maharaj, how he had that problem. We have to also be very careful and not be inattentive, not deviate. You have to constantly check and keep association and be willing to hear from peers. Be willing to hear from those around you, peers. And don't think I know everything, but be willing to take advice and guidance. That's the point. What's your question? We should not be close to Krishna because we may think Krishna is an ordinary person. Well, first you have to learn to be close to this, you know, to become close to Krishna, first you have to become qualified to become, you don't get immediately close to Krishna. You have to perform pious activities over many lifetimes. Then you may get a chance to be close to Krishna. Right now, you haven't performed pious activities over many lifetimes. So you can get close to some devotees. You can be around the devotees. And sometimes the spiritual teacher may come here and you may be able to sit and you can listen to their lecture and hear from them. So like that, you get a little training gradually how to behave and how to associate with the senior devotees and with the pure devotees, with the spiritual teachers. And in this way, one day, after many lifetimes, you'll become qualified to associate with Krishna. Not immediately. Not that in this life you're going to get association with Krishna. It's going to take time. So, Hare, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Oh, I have a question. You talked about uh, coming material pleasure for the service of the Lord. Uh, in this age of Kali, I mean, uh, material pleasures are being dangled. I mean, you go, you don't have to turn on television or radio or mainstream media to have access to material pleasures. You are being bombarded with prospect of uh, material pleasures. They are everywhere. They are uh, tempting you, inviting you all the time. So, in this age of Kali, this is a very difficult situation to overcome, to overcome material pleasures for the service of the Lord. When you are being bombarded with so many prospects through media, through billboards, whenever, whenever you go out, you see prospect of material pleasures. And for neophyte devotees, it's very difficult to overcome these uh, situations like not to, uh, no, not to say no to material pleasures and get engaged to Krishna's service. So, Maharaj uh, wants your comments, your advice on this. Yes, you say, you say it's very difficult, but every, everywhere, every age, there's material pleasure. You know, the pleasure here on this planet is nothing compared to the pleasure in the heavenly planets. To go, if you were to go to Swarga Loka, the pleasures there are so many, many, many times greater than any pleasure here on this planet. 
So it's all very relative. What we're thinking is pleasure. You know, the, the demigods, they, they, they would laugh at what you think is pleasure. <laughs> you know, for the demigods, you think pleasure, you know? <laughs> so the concept of what is pleasure is very mixed, you see. There's low pleasure and there's high pleasure. The high grade. But do you want the highest pleasure? If you want the highest pleasure, then you can get the highest pleasure simply by chanting the holy name. Simply by taking up this Hare Krishna mantra, regularly chanting and worshipping Lord Krishna. You can experience the highest pleasure. The so-called pleasure of this world is something like the pleasures of the hogs and the dogs. You know, the, the, we, we don't think the dogs are having great pleasure. And similarly, the pigs. But, you know, for the, those creatures in that body, they're thinking, they're enjoying. The pig is enjoying. He's happy. He's having pig food every day. He has his pig family. He's very happy. And the dogs, they're happy. They fight and bark with each other and they run after people and try to bite them. And this is the pleasure for the dogs. So there is pleasure like the animals, but there, there is a higher culture of pleasure. You know, some people think pleasure, they think it's pleasure to eat anything. They think, you know, one person told me, he said, oh, you Hare Krishnas, you can't eat this, you can't eat that. He said, I can eat everything. You know, his thinking is blessed. Actually, it's a curse. He's cursed and he, he's thinking, he's enjoying because he can eat everything. So, it's, so this is the illusion of the material world that we're thinking there's enjoyment, but actually... The real enjoyment is within, and we have to awaken that inner pleasure which comes from the soul. The soul is Ananda Maya Bayasat, and we can experience that Ananda by practice of Bhakti Yoga, beginning with the chanting of Hare Krishna Mantra. When we start to chant the holy names of the Lord, then we can awaken our spiritual consciousness and we can understand more about what is real pleasure. You know, we may think, oh, it's pleasure. We're here in this room. We have the electric fan. You know, we think, oh, it's so nice. You know, the fan makes it cooler. You know, we're thinking that's pleasure. It just means no suffering. It's not really pleasure, but it's just less suffering. So similar, the so-called pleasure of the material world, just less suffering. And we're thinking, I'm enjoying. No, it's not real. That is not real enjoyment. The real enjoyment is available for every living entity. It has to be awakened from within, from the soul. So we are teaching everyone to chant this Hare Krishna mantra, <clears throat> chant the holy name, hear about Krishna. In this way, we can experience inner pleasure, not that pleasure of the, the hogs and the dogs. Yes, Prabhu? So Maharaj, once I was hearing uh, from one of the uh, very senior devotee about uh, 12 kinds of uh, Vaishnava Bhavrat uh, among uh, devotee circle. So uh, it was mentioned there Maharaj that uh, considering an, uh, based on different criteria such as his past activity, birth, occupation etc etc. It is a kind of offense. And on the other hand Maharaj, uh, according to Nectar of Instruction, uh, whatever I read, uh, heard from the senior, it was mentioned that uh, one can judge, one should judge a devotee and deal with him accordingly. So, 
I feel contradiction in these two statements, Mara. So can you please clear my confusion? I haven't I haven't got your whole argument, Prabhu. It's not so clear for me what you're talking about. Uh, the contradiction is, uh, ma'am, uh, Maharaj. Uh, once I was listening from a uh, very senior devotee about twelve kinds of Vaishnava avrad. So there it was mentioned uh, considering someone inferior on the basis of different criteria uh, such as past activity, birth, ashram, etc., etc., and judging him is a kind of Vaishnava avrad. And according to nectar of instruction, on the other hand, it is mentioned that uh, we should. Judge, uh, discriminate between devotees and uh, deal with him accordingly. So between th these two statements, Maharaj, I feel the constant contradiction. No, I don't see any contradiction because the offense was in relating a person's spiritual position due to past circumstances. Your, the offense was if you if you consider a person due to his birth in a particular caste or section of society, or if you consider a person on the basis of something he did in the past before becoming a devotee, then that is wrong. But we do have to discriminate a person on the basis of their position, meaning their position now. How much they have actually realized the Krishna consciousness knowledge and how much they are able to practice and present that information. So that is the, the point that you, you have to discriminate. Someone is Kanista, someone is Madhya, someone is Uttama. There are different levels of devotees. You have to discriminate what which particular person you're going to associate with and you want to take advantage of their association. So you consider their spiritual position. You judge for yourself what person, the person you consider to be spiritually advanced. And you then make efforts to associate with and to serve that person. That is based on now, the present circumstances. The offense is in considering their paths. Thank you very much. All right, any other question? Hare Krishna. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I have a question. Yes. Uh, Maharaj, we see that uh, Bharat Maharaj in his second life, he became a deer and he was very conscious that not to associate with his family members. He went to another place. But when he came as Jar Bharat, he didn't leave home, but he stayed with them like a deaf and dumb person, like a madman. So, why he didn't leave home? No, he did leave home. He did. No. He was wandering. That's why he got taken by Maharaj Rahugan to carry his palanquin. Because he was wandering. He was free. The family didn't value him. They were not attached to him. And so Maharaj Rahugan saw him there and he took him, told him carry the palanquin. So he did leave the home. Uh, one more question I have, Maharaj, that like to be focused or very alert in Krishna consciousness, it seems like too much taxing for the conditioned mind. And we feel that, you know, after a lot of uh, focus, we should little let ourselves uh, free and experience some sense gratification. So uh, then we lose that alertness or focus. <coughs> so how we can be always alert because that realization we don't have that Krishna consciousness is so important. By practice, when you get hit, when, when Prabhupada talks about the school of hard knocks. You, you go to, <laughs> or they, they give the story, a man with a bald head will be very careful not to work, walk under a bale tree. <laughs> right? Because the bale fruit is very hard. And you have a bald head, and if a bale fruit falls on your head, oh, 
<laughs> yeah. You won't want that to happen again. So also there's a thing called this, the school of hard knocks. You get a hard knock. Wow, you're, you're very careful not to get knocked again. So sometimes we have to learn like that, the hard way. You have to be knocked a bit. Then you understand, oh, I should be more careful. So just like Jad Bharat, he got a knock. He was up there and he was away. He thought he was away from everything, but he got into a little Maya. He became a deer. So he was very careful next time. He'd already been in the body of a deer. He didn't want to go through that again. So like that, sometimes we need to get that, that knock from the material energy just to, punk, to correct us, to point out our mistakes and to make it clear for us how careful we have to be. You understand? Yeah? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, Maharaj, I have a question. Oh, okay. uh, I have a similar question to what Prabhupada asked. But uh, I wanted a little clarification. Like Haridas Thakur would chant always uh, and uh, he would chant incessantly. Uh, but when we are matla, working and we have other jobs, etc. Uh, even if he would try to chant always, we may not be focused or we may not be attentive. So uh, uh, what would you I mean, recommend? In this connection well if you can chant when you're doing the job also then do it even though your focus or your attention may not be so good but if you can do it keep chanting no harm you know when you may have to be doing service you may just like you know we can also be cooking or cleaning polishing the brass doing different we can be chanting at the same time so we, we do want to try to keep chanting. That's very healthy, very good way to make spiritual advancement. To keep chanting, keep the holy name on your tongue in every situation. So and don't, if, don't and worry. You know, devotees are doing a lot of rounds. They want to do a lot of rounds, do more. Even if you cannot chant on the beats, but just chant or sing the holy name. Just sing to yourself. Keep yourself in Krishna consciousness. Yes? Any other questions? Some over here, was it? Yes. Hey, Krishna Maharaj. Uh, as you told about the ego, that ego is proportional to the size of the soul. So I have already one question about that. How one can differentiate between the ego and the self-respect? How one between can the ego and what? Self-respect. Self-respect. Self well, you want to have pure ego, right? There's false ego and pure ego. Pure ego is to understand I am the servant of Krishna. False ego is to think I'm the enjoyer, I am the controller, I'm independent, I can do what I like. So we have to come to the, the level of pure ego. Self-respect, self, how, how to respect ourselves? We should respect ourselves as an insignificant servant of Krishna. We should respect ourselves in the sense of being a servant of Krishna. That is the proper respect. But any other kind of self-respect, oh, I'm a businessman, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a software engineer, I'm this, I'm that, you know, that is, that is just the modes of nature. That's so, not really pure ego. It's influenced by the material energy. So we want to come to the spiritual platform and think of ourselves in relation to Krishna. He's the master and we are tiny servants. Yep, thank you. Yes? Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, as you have told the story of Bharat, uh, in his third life, 
he became he shows like he is a madman and he only reveals his stories of truth to the king why not he tell the truth to his parents also so that they also can be elevated to krishna consciousness have you ever tried preaching to your parents <laughs> <laughs> and there are also several other <laughs> in the story there are also several other characters he also can told them about his truth but he only reveals his secret to king only well not else that's how krishna did it evam parampara praptam imam raja shayo vidu you give the knowledge to the kings and the other people will get it from the kings the same for the kings they pass on the knowledge to all their citizens you go to the head of the society that's the best way to preach go to the leaders make them god conscious then the other people will pick up the message very quickly right all right folks thank you Okay, maybe we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Uh, so in the evening it will be resuming at 4 30 and uh, so that will be the last session of this best open program for this camp. So that's why we request the audience to come prepared with questions and have uh, more questions. So that what else sessions happen to them. You can even fill the questions in the Google sheet. It is uh, Tiny.cc slash dp2022. That is the website. That's the link for the Google Sheet. You can put your question there, or you can ask.